welcome to um, Expedition Church of the Triad. And uh, I guess we forgot to turn off their stuff. Bill, how about next time you don't do that? I can hear it all the way up here. Apparently not. I heard it floating all the way up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, um, <coughs> just echoing off that back wall, coming all the way up here, just bouncing all around the room. Uh, if you weren't here tonight live and in person, you missed a treat. We had, we had um, hot dogs and um, my wife's famous uh, burger hot dog chili. Good as usual, baked beans, the s'mores, hallelujah, on our campfire Wednesday night, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and I do believe everybody ate sufficient amounts, with the look of the eyes out there, I think you ate more than sufficient amounts, <laughs> like you're about to go right on over, so if, if you see me go out on the plat stage, it's probably not being slain in the spirit, hallelujah, of course it could be. But I won't guarantee it. All right. Let's pick up with where we, we've been for a few, uh, two or three Wednesday nights on reclaiming the blessing. Um, let's just go ahead and read my opening dialogue from the beginning of this series. Each day we have the opportunity to choose whether or not we live in a way that is pleasing to God. We activate or deactivate the blessing in our lives by the words we speak. Jesus died so we could receive the blessing and not the curse. We must understand that the, Abra the Abrahamic covenant in order to have confidence in the blessing of God. And we start off with the Gospels refer to the blessing, make, make reference to it. Um, the curse came. People lost the blessing. Uh, much of the Abrahamic covenant was not in, in enforced or uh, made active because people didn't know how to claim it with the words. Uh, so we, we, we reclaim what God promised. Amen. Um, and what do we do? We said that you use your divine, you, you, you employ, or we could say deploy, your divine apparatus, your mouth. Okay. You have a divine apparatus for receiving the blessing. That is your mouth. Okay. God gave you words to speak. Amen? So we activate the blessing or decla by, by, by declaring the promises of God over your life. Amen. Um, understand that, you know, you might say, Pastor, you harp and you teach and you preach. And I come here and, and I mean, you know, every every service or every third service or you know, a lot, you talk about getting into the Word. Well, there's a reason. Because the entrance of thy Word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. Without the Word, you cannot walk in the revelation necessary to walk in the purposes and plans of God. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, we all, say all, every one of us, say every one of us, brought spiritual baggage into the kingdom, kingdom of God. You had your ideas, your beliefs, your thoughts, your position on what being a Christian is, what it is to be a believer. And Quite frankly, probably most of us, at minimum of 75% of it was wrong. Because our interpretation was based on human experience and not the actual evidence of God's Word. Okay? And so because of that, we have to be reprogrammed. The world is reprogramming the world. They're reprogramming our children. They've brought all this junk into the school systems. And they are, it's a deliberate, purposeful 
indoctrination, but really what I'm saying is it's, it's reprogramming. It's breaking down what mom and dad said. Don't tell your mom and dad what we did in class today. They won't understand. Trust me, the teacher. I know better than your parents. Basically, they're ignorant bimbos who don't know anything. I'm the enlightened one. I'm the teacher. So they take a trusted position and they indoctrinate or reprogram. Um, I don't have the evidence, but I suspect highly, and I suspect highly that I'm right, that all of our video games have subliminal reprogramming techniques in them to train the minds of children along a certain line of thought. Okay? Um, how many of y'all remember the backward masking um, whatever? Gary Greenwald. Okay? What's that his name? You know, playing songs backwards. You know, Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven. If you, if you put that on the turntable, put the needle down, and then didn't have it spinning, but that turned it backwards, it would say Satan gives you 666. And it's not something, I did it. Okay? I did it. Had some leftover albums from whenever. Pre, B, they were B.C., they were before Christ, okay? And uh, you, could put, you could turn it backwards. It would say, Satan will give you 666. You know, and it wasn't like you go, uh, uh, it was really clear, all right? So it's, it started even that far back. <clears throat> there is a deliberate reprogram. Well, now, I said that because I want to get to this. When you get born again, your mind has been brought up under the spirit of the world, the spirit of Antichrist. It has been trained to believe what it sees, what it hears, what it touches, what it touch, uh, touches, what it tastes, um, what it smells, the five senses. It's trained to only accept what it can interpret through those senses. But you come into the kingdom of God and we say live by faith. And it takes a reprogramming by the Word of God to bring you to the point that you can accept what you cannot see, what you cannot hear, what you cannot smell, what you cannot taste, and what you cannot touch as a fact and re of reality. That takes, that, that's, that takes time. Because every one of us, depending on when we get saved, have a, a, at that point a lifetime of experience. Don't we? Don't we have a lifetime of experience? Haven't we developed a belief system based on those experiences? Now, some people go, there's not a God. Why? Because my mama died. He didn't heal her. And the church said that he did it for a reason. Um, dumb church people. They were wrong. That's not what the Bible's teaching. You know, God did it for some un unforeseen reason. You can't understand why. Just trust him. Why? You tell me he's good and he killed my mama. Killed my baby. Killed my brother. Okay? See, when you, when, but see, experience has taught people to believe that. So we have to go back to the Word, and that's why we keep saying it over and over and over again. If you are having a hard time receiving something from God, okay, you just have to stay in the Word. Because the entrance of his word gives light. Now, it may take some time for that entrance of that word to undo your hardcore, deep-seated, stubborn, well, I believes. Because you can have a whole lot of, well, I believe. Yeah, but why do you believe it? Do you believe that because that's what the Bible teaches, or do you believe it because that's what uh, a relative who had an experience said, or a friend who had an experience said, or your own experiences said, or do, have you gotten that from the Word of God? Because if it did not come from God's Word, to come out of harmony with God's Word, then you've got to make some adjustments. So we will never stop harping. We can't. <clears throat> See, I can give you 15 easy steps to getting healed, but if you don't get revelation out of the Word of God, 
my 15 steps won't mean anything. It has to come. So we endeavor. We endeavor to continue to say these things and to go along these lines in, in the hope that somewhere in there it's going to click. And you're going to go, oh, 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 now I see it. Now, look, I grew up in church. I heard John 3.16 preached. I heard that if you don't get saved, you're going to a devil's hell. I left church smelling like fire and brimstone. But I hung on to the altar to the bitter end and made it out without getting my, giving up my life style. Whew. Made it through another service. Yeah. Why are my shoes so black? <laughs> oh, uh, they smell like they're on fire. The rubber on the bottom's melted. You know? I mean, you got some old Pentecostals that could, I mean, they could bring the flames of hell up, singe the hair on the back of your neck. Woo! But they made it out. My, my fingerprints are, are, are still ingrained in the wood altar. Okay? Holding on. And we weren't holding on to Jesus. We were holding on to our lifestyle. But there was a day that came that the light came. And faith arose in the heart and walked in it. So we have, to, we have to understand, if you are not, and I don't know why I'm way over here. I'm reclaiming the blessing. That's right. If you are not receiving, don't get mad because a preacher keeps preaching on, you know, so he didn't get you healed through a special anointing service. We want the Holy Spirit to show up and manifest. We want him to minister. But remember, the gifts of the Spirit are manifest as he will. Isn't that right? He wills when there are manifestations of the Spirit and the gifts of healing are in operation, or special faith is in operation, or working of miracles is in operation. Well, why doesn't he do it when I want him to do it? Probably because that's what you want, and you're not willing to let, let faith arise in your heart. Two re one, well, one major reason, because if you don't get faith involved, you'll lose it. And you'll be coming back hoping the preacher's got it again the next time. That went over big, didn't it? Um, I told you all the story. I'll tell it again. <clears throat> A man came to Brother Hagin one time, and I forgot what had happened, but he had something uh, happened in his, in his body. And... Um, Back then, Angel Simpson McPherson, the originator of the Four Square Church, but she's the one that would go walk down the aisles. She'd walk in the back of the auditorium, and everybody's worshiping God, didn't know she had come in, and she'd be walking down the aisles, and the people would just fall out in the spirit, and she walked by. They never saw her coming. It's not like they walked up, they saw them coming, and they, you know, courtesy fell. She came in from behind them, they never saw her, and they just fell over in the spirit. Okay? And um, I'm not saying that was not legitimate, I'm just saying. That's, that, that power was so strong. And this man uh, told his wife, said, well, I've heard about that Amy Simple McPherson woman down there. Uh, I'm going to take the train. I'm going to go down there. And when you went back in those days, I don't know if you all know this or not. <clears throat> you see, <laughs> I'm so far away from getting to what I was going to get to tonight. Next week. Um, you don't mind if the Holy Ghost takes me somewhere else, do you? Better not. It's the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm just going to stay with him anyway, okay? But back in the 40s, in, in, in the, during the healing revival, when you went to the healing evangelist meetings, they made you go to healing classes before you ever got in line. And they taught the Word. See, too many people just want a manifestation to get it for them. And there's nothing wrong with the manifestation, but they understood, they they had already been in this long enough to understand that we had to get people cooperating with the anointing. And so you would have to go through a certain number of healing classes before they would give you a card to get in line to have hands laid on you. Okay? And so he went down there, he got in the healing classes, got in line, and got instantly healed. Went back home. Well, sometime later, it, whatever it was, came back. He said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. 
That's why I said, I'm going back down there, Simple McPherson's. I'm going to get in her, I'm going to go to classes. I'm going to get in the line. And he did and didn't get, didn't get healed. I think he went and got in line a couple of times, came back home and said, well, uh, she had it, but she lost it. Why? Because he's depending on her gift to get him healed. And it worked the first time, but then he didn't work and keep it by staying in faith with the word. So, you know, Raymond T. Ritchie came through the area. He went to his meeting, laid hands on, laid hands on him. He went back to his wife and said, well, Raymond T. Ritchie don't have it. Now, Sister McPherson, she had it, but she lost it. Okay. Jack, Jack Coe came through. He said, Coe don't ha didn't have it. Richie didn't have it. McPherson had it, but she lost it. Okay. Went through, um, you know, um, all, all different ones. I mean, they were all coming through there. I, for I, for I forget all the names of different ones. He's telling Brother Hagin this story because he's been in his line. And he said, now you've laid hands on me twice. And I ain't got nothing. Now I went over to Coe's. He didn't have it. Richie didn't have it. So-and-so didn't have it, you know. Um, so-and-so didn't have it. Now, McPherson, she did have it, but she lost it. And Brother Hagin looked at him and said, well, you haven't asked me anything. You just told me something. Well, he said, well, how come I can't get, you didn't get healed? He said, oh, that's easy. He said, the first time you got it, you got it on, on a gift of the Spirit. But after that, God expected you to use your faith. He says, well, don't get back in my line again. He said, you come to the morning services while I teach. And he said, don't you come in here for, I, I forgot, I mean, nine days or something. Just come to the morning services, sit under while I teach. After nine days, he was going down the line. That guy was in line. He said, I see you're back. He said, yeah. He said, you lay your hands on me. I'll be healed too. He said, lay hands on me. Instantly got healed. Okay? Because we have to cooperate even with the gifts of the Spirit and the anointing, we have to cooperate with our faith. Okay? So you can get healed off a gift of the Spirit. I, I met a woman one time. She came to the church. She called. She had a friend. That, the friend brought her. Back in the um, business part, we had a bookstore. And um, they called, and they had been to the church at some point in time, knew we had a bookstore, and, and called and wanted to come over and go in the bookstore and get some books on healing. So they came over. You know, it was during the day and during the week, and uh, my, my sister at the time was there, and we, we were talking with her and a little friend. And uh, the woman goes, I, I'm deaf. And, uh, and then a friend explained to her, she said, well, she was in so-and-so's meeting and got healed. And for four days could hear clearly. Walk up, woke up on the fifth day, she was, she was deaf again. And, and hadn't been able to get, you know, get healed. And she'd been going around trying to get people to pray for her. And I said, well, you know, she wanted to get the books. Um, to get, I said, well, you need to get back and get in the Word and get in the faith. God expects you to connect with him and operate in faith. Now, I never heard from her again. Um, we, we actually just gave her the books, you know, because I knew the truth was in, was, in, was in the light that would come from the Word, you know, and books that, that used the Word to, to help organize it for you so you could get into faith with it. Amen? But here's somebody for four days per heard perfectly. Had lived their life deaf, but heard perfectly. And woke up on the fifth death. Well, I don't know why the Lord did. See, what, um, again, Dad used to teach. Well, didn't Dad? Well, of course, he's not here. But he shared how that back in the, uh, when he was going into churches, and they lay their hands on people, and people get healed. Come back a year later, and 80% of the people who got healed the, the year before were back in line for the same thing again. And it started bothering him because he was seeing this pattern. He went to the Lord and said, Lord, what? What is this? I know they were healed. Doctors said they were healed. We have testament. We have miracles. We had miracles. We know. He said because they didn't get into the Word and build their faith. So when it tried to come back, they, they weren't able to resist it. Amen. Let me tell you something. My toe will never have infection in it and, and, and gangrene in it ever again. That ship has passed and been sunk in the blood. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Now, so he went to the Lord. And said, I said, Lord, help me. How, how can I, what can I do? And that's when he talked to him and told him, said, 
Start teaching in the mornings on faith. And so he started doing that. He taught every morning on faith. And then twice a week, he'd have healing lines and minister to the sick by the laying on of hands. Now, you know, obviously this takes some time. It took him a year or so of the before and started tracking and finding out people. 80% of the people were losing their healing. Now, after he went through the cycle of teaching and started coming back again to the churches again, 80% were keeping it. Complete reversal. Complete reversal. Because he was teaching the Word. Why is the Word so important? The entrance of the Word giveth light. See, your body and your mind and your thoughts and your beliefs can hinder the things of God from operating in your life. You might want it real bad, but I'm going to tell you like John Osteen said, it's how bad as you want to. He preached a sermon on how bad, how big as you want to, not how bad, how big as you want to. See, his mama, um, her, his, his dad had passed away. His mama was, was living as a widow woman, and she dipped snuff. Anybody ever talked to somebody who was dipping snuff while you were talking to them? Do you want to know what that is? It's nasty. That brown juice running out between the teeth and all up in the gum line and, 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 and drooling down the side over here. And they got that napkin that's brown with the spit in it. Anybody ever seen that? Okay, who hadn't ever seen that? Anybody that never seen that? Who's, who's never seen that? You ever seen that? Janice? Daniel? Oh, yeah, okay. So everybody's seen that. See, I, now I worked in tobacco as a kid, and, and the women at the barn, they, they, were the, they, they, they looped and hung on the stick. Um, they all dipped snuff. Mama Rosa's. Mama Rose, snuff. You go up there, and they had that, that jaw perked out over here. I mean, it's just running down over here. Just as nasty. That's just a nasty looking habit. It's worse than chewing tobacco. I mean, snuff, that snuff is real fine. And it just gets all the spit in your mouth brown. Just sloshing it around in there. I don't know how they drink a Coke and do that. Of course, down there was Pepsi Cola with a peanuts, bag of peanuts in it. Pepsi was founded in Newburgh, North Carolina. About 40 miles, 30, 35 miles from Greenville. So, you know, Pepsi was the drink of the day. All right. And, um, but John Osteen's mom was, he, he came to visit one time and he said, Now, mama, that's a nasty habit. That's, he said, That's just a nasty habit, mama. She said, Yeah, John, but I, I tried to quit, but I couldn't. And he tried to talk, but she wouldn't quit dipping stuff. Well, in one little while, I didn't get to see his mom for a while. I came back and uh, noticed she won't dip in snuff. He said, Mama, what happened? You're not dipping stuff. She said, oh, I met a man. Her want to got big enough. I said, her want to got big enough. And too often in the body of Christ, <clears throat> when we are dealing with stuff in our lives, many people will develop a, with a, eh, all right, I can just put up with it, attitude. And their want to is not big enough to pursue the necessary things so they can get healed. Yeah, they'd like to be healed. But they'd like to get it without any effort on their part. They don't want to spend time in the Word. They don't want to listen to tape series all night long. They don't want to make the confessions. Now, like my grandmama, grandmama, you try to talk to her about healing, and, you know, she was open to the Lord working a miracle and healing her, but she had more enjoyment out of complaining about the rheumatoid, hello, and the bursitis than she did about believing God to be healed. It got her attention at church. Well, how are you doing today? Uh, that bursitis is acting up today. Bless your heart. You know, you know they, don't, they don't even bother saying, we'll pray for you. Hello. 
and they didn't give her the word. Waiting for the evangelist to come through, maybe he'll have something this time and get, get it across. But not really wanting it because if you really, you know, because then you lose your whole, you know, conversation starter. Can't start your conversation. Jamie's mama. Now, she'll, uh, she, would, she would get you in the room and have TV on and say, you need to see this movie. And she started to start talking. And everybody's looking at the movie, and she's looking at everybody in the room. Don't glance and make eye contact. Because it was magnetic. <laughs> and then she was off for another three hours. And you're like, I didn't have to watch the movie. You told me everything that happened. We took her to a theater one time. <laughs> We remember, I don't know how she ended up. I think we went and got her and took her. I don't remember her aunt, her aunt Frances. I don't remember. She was down there. And we took. We went to a movie together, and she's sitting there in the movie. Well, I I just as loud. I don't believe that. I was just, we're like, and Jane's going, Mama, Mama. Well, I just tell you this. She didn't care. She's gonna have her say. My, oh, my, oh, my. How come I got off on that? Hey, brother, brother, you said, so how come me to get off on that? <coughs> that was good anyhow. All right. Anybody ever been around that? Somebody, you, know, a, 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 you know, and she's gotten worse now. She'll just repeat stuff. Like that Frosty Born commercial over and over. And you just, you just love on her. Yeah, yeah, yesterday we were taking her to the doctor. And we had a two and a half, three and a half hour space in between her blood work and the appointment. All she talked about for three and a half hours was when we're going back to the doctor. Because she didn't want to be late. Miss Glisson, we're going to go get food first. And we, take, we took her to uh, Old Navy to get some stuff. And then took, got her nails done. Then took her, got her hair done. Then we drove over to Aiden and ate at Edwards Pharmacy and got hamburger and onion gravy and mashed potatoes and green beans and rolls. And then after that, when well, we're going back to the doctor. We said, well, we, we got to, you got two more hours, Miss Clifton. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> then we went by the pharmacy. She, she used to work at a CVS. So took her to CVS, and her old boss was there. And one of the em, uh, former employees, and one of the employees used to work with her came out and about in tears herself because she hadn't seen her in about three years since she retired. And it was just so happy to see her. And the boss, the uh, man, store manager came out, and uh, she was just, she was about to cry just seeing him. And uh, so we had a good day with her yesterday, okay? But she was in the back seat. We couldn't make eye contact. <laughs> but she's always, it don't have anything with her mental state at this point. She's always been like that. She'd just say something random. Up, up, so you go, what? Oh, and then she got you. <laughs> uh-huh. Bit that one, didn't you? Now, you're in here. I mean, I contact with you. The value, the value of getting into the Word is immeasurable. We cannot measure the value of it. And people get tired of hearing it sometimes because they just want, they just want somebody to get it for them. And that will work. When you're a babe, there are times there's just mercy involved. Are you here? But as a general rule, you're going to have to get into the Word. Okay? So that you can begin to speak what you want to receive from God. You want to receive the blessing, you're going to have to be speaking the blessing. You don't get sympathy speaking the Word. As a matter of fact, a lot of times you get weird looks. Like, they are crazy. That's some religious nut. Because you ask them how they're doing. I'm the healed of the Lord. Jesus bore my, took, took my sickness and my disease and took it to the cross. You don't look like it. I've shared this before, I'll share it again. We were at Ramah. 
back in the 90s for a, for a winter Bible seminar. And we, we got there late one morning, and we were in, the, in the, what's now the Nanowski Rec Center, but it, they had opened that and turned it into Rayma Bible Church because the church outgrown the, the Rooker Memorial Auditorium. We hadn't built the, the new church over there yet. And, um, and so Copeland was there, Savelle was there. There was a group, you know, a group of the Word of Faith guys. And they would slip, a lot of times they would slip in the back after service started and sit near the back so they didn't get accosted by all the Rama students. Because they might have a word for them. You know, I mean, you know, I want to stop right there in the middle of service and talk about, you know, what they think about this doctrine or whatever. And so they tried to come low key. I understand that. They were there to hear, you know, Brother Hagin minister, not to, not to have, you know, 30 Rama students trying to give them a word or whatever. And so, um, and then near the end of that service, they slipped out of the building. And uh, they went, I said, we watched them. They, we could see through the doors. They walked across the street to the Christian bookstore. There was a Christian bookstore right across the street. And they went there. Well, not, not long after that, on the broadcast, Brother Copeland was talking about that, that day. You know, they were in there. They were over there at the service, and they, they, didn't, name, they didn't say where it was. We knew where it was because we were there <coughs> and saw them do it. And see, and right across the street, at, and there was a Christian bookstore. We slipped out and went over the store, and I was walking around in there. And, uh, you know, uh, everybody around Rama goes to Rama. All the store people, they hire all the Rama students, okay? Besides the spinning eyes, they're pretty good employees. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, a lot of us back then, listen, I, I can say this with Greg, I was like that. <laughs> you know, one of them crazy Maddox. Not a charismatic, a crazy Maddox. Thank God they got us straightened out. And um, he's walking around there just doing something, and he, he sneezed. And the, uh, the counter person went, my God, brother, are you coming down with something? And he went, no, I'm the healed of the Lord. And he, start, I mean, he just went off and started quoting Scripture. Uh, you know, By his stripes I was healed. First Peter 2, 24 says, himself bore our sickness and care of my diseases. I mean, I um, said, uh, whose own self bear my sins and his own body on the tree. By whose stripes I was healed. He's quoting Isaiah. He's quoting Psalm 103. He's been quoting Matthew 8, 17. And finally, he kind of comes out of it and stops. And the clerk, this is like a Ramos student. The clerk's back there like this went, you really believe it, don't you? What happened? It was, he's so full of it that when it got pricked, it just, <laughs> that doesn't come, that doesn't come, that come into church on Sunday morning, Wednesday night, listen to Pastor Ed, dissecting it, trying to figure out how you can get it without doing anything, or questioning why you can't get it without doing anything. It comes from this book of the law, not departing out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Joshua 1.8. Amen. See, without that continual feeding, how many of you ever looked for something and you looked and you looked and you looked and you would have swore on a stack of Bibles this high, it won't there? You ever anything like that? Something small on the floor, in the carpet, whatever, and you have looked and you have looked and you have looked and you've gotten down with a flashlight. But all of a sudden as you're walking by, the light catches it at just the right angle. And you go, well, there it is. It's been there the whole time. It's been there the whole time. But it wasn't until the light hit it just right that you saw it. And the things of God are often like that. You're, you're trying, you're trying so hard to find it. And let me say this. You're trying so hard to find it that you're assuming that it's not there or it's not there. And a lot of times we're trying to go to the Word, if we are going to the Word, Already assuming, well, it's not in this scripture, it's not in that scripture, and you're just you're just kind of glancing by. But if you'll stay with it, the light will hit it right. And when that happens, you go, oh, there it is. 
and you pick it up. And it's just like these people who used to get in the healing lines. You know, they after he, they would do what Brother Hagin would tell them about going and, you know, go, go do this, sit in the morning services, study the word, do this, do this. They'd come back and say, um, just lay your hands on me. I'll be healed. I'm ready to receive. I believe, I believe that I'll be healed the moment you lay hands on me. They got there by faith. The light came. And I'll be honest with you, there's nothing more satisfying than ministering to people and seeing the light come. When all of a sudden, they just, they, it just goes, that was too easy. It's kind of like, um, I am not going to get to my final point of this series tonight. There's next week. Okay. Short wind shall preach again. Brother Bill, take that for a word from the Lord. Y'all remember those 3D art things when you could just stare at them and stare at them and stare at them and all of a sudden your eyes would focus just right and you could see this, you could walk around. They, we had, they had one that had a um, Statue of Liberty and the Twin Towers in the New York City skyscape. My dad has it. And, um, and they were all like, oh, yes. And I'm like, I don't see nothing. Just a bunch of geometric patterns on top of that paper. And I'm like, Relax your eyes, you know, just. Man, I was like a contortionist with my eyeballs. <laughs> Nothing. And one day I'm like, he said, try looking past it. And, and, and all of a sudden it started, it started forming. And then I, once my eyes focused on it, I'm like, there's the Twin Towers right there. There's the Statue of Liberty. There's the New York Skyscape. Skyscape. Skyline. There you go. That's, there's a bunch of skyscrapers. The skyline. And I'm just sitting there looking at it going, well, that is cool. I can walk up to there. It's, it's in his garage. I can, every time I go over there, I walk out and go, still there. <laughs> it's the same thing like the Word. You can look. You can try so hard, try so hard, try so hard. But when the adjustment gets made, now you know how to do it all the time. Because he had another one that had a unicorn in it. I can walk, I can, as soon as I got done with the skyscraper one, oh, had it bothered me. You know, just all these, you turn the pages and, mm, oh, there, there. And the word. Amen. Seeing it start, okay, it's the end. <coughs> and you can get frustrated because you're not sitting. There. And you can start trying. Okay. That's when you're. And you continue. Forward. Then when that focus takes place, also clear, it becomes easy. You know how to achieve it. So you can bring it any one of those things up now, and I can look into it and see. It. Feel your eyes doing whatever they're doing. I mean, you know, the, 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 the red eye it is, but you can feel it. Focus in on that, and you're like, But before it was just a flat piece. Of, you're looking in 3D. Think about it. You're looking at a flat piece of paper, but seeing a 3D image. That's weird, isn't it? And I mean very crystal clear 3D image. You're looking into a book, a, the Word of God, the Bible. But you're seeing into the spiritual truth of that word. And the focus shifts from a mental to a spiritual revelation. And you're now able to see clearly to apply it to your life. Amen. Don't ever give up on the word. Don't quit. Don't get frustrated hearing it over again. Don't get mad when somebody tells you again. 
go to the Word. Go to the Word. Go to the Word. Amen. Don't get upset because, well, I've had four people lay hands on me. I didn't get anything. I don't even know if this stuff is real. There's a problem. Now you're going to start questioning. Amen. Kind of like that meme they have out now. Um, God's word says, exclamation point. God's word says, question mark. In the garden, Satan, hath God said? He knew he said, but he questioned it. He's still trying to get people to question the validity of the word. And the way he gets them to question it is through their experience to keep them out of faith. It's so important we learn that walk of faith. Amen. We keep looking and we keep looking into the word. Whosoever looketh unto the perfect law of liberty and what? Continueth therein. Isn't that right? Continueth therein. You pulling that up, Bill? If you were a six-gun shooter, you might be down right now. <laughs> Doc Holliday, we're taking you out. Huh? It was the hot dog slowed him down. I'm just picking on Bill. He likes a good joke. But we've been assimilated by the Borg by now. Locutus. Who shall look at them to the perfect law of liberty and be and continue with therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. What deed? That which he's doing in the word. That which he's receiving out of the word. But notice he has to continue therein. It's not a glance, folks. Pastor Ed said, 1 Peter 2, 24, get it for me. Well, praise God, 1 Peter 2, 24, by stress, I was healed. Okay, Lord, I want that. You know. That ain't going to cut it. You got to continue therein. You have to look at it until your focus sees the whole and not the surface. Goes past the flat piece of paper with geometric images and to seeing into the fullness of truth. That what God promised you is real. Faith rises in your heart and you receive it. Amen? May I get blessed? All right. All right. Real quick. Let's, we, we, we're, we'll pick up. Next week, I semi-promise. You know why I semi-promise? Because I can't promise you that I will do the last point next week. Because I could get here and the Holy Ghost go, like he did tonight. But that was good anyhow. I about preached myself happy. Or teach, I about taught myself happy. Amen. All right. Um, time to give. If you're going to give electronically, go ahead and get that ready. Those watching online, if you want to uh, give to the church here, you know, PayPal or um, Cash App, um, dollar sign Expedition Triad is Cash App. Give at expeditiontriad.org. It's PayPal. Okay? And, um, Give to our building fund, give to missions, give to the general offering. Hallelujah. Uh, we do say if you are a member of a church and you're going to that church, please do not tithe here. If you don't go here, your tithe belongs where you go. That's just, you know, offerings are one thing, but the tithe belongs where you go to church. Amen. And uh, your, your main support goes there. If God speaks to you and wants you to give something here special, that's fine. Amen. But we do. We don't want. We don't want the tithe from another church coming here. You got pastor doing a work for God, needs that money to come in so they can do what they're doing for the kingdom. If that's where you go, that's where it belongs. Just saying. Hallelujah. And if you got an extra couple hundred thousand laying around, you just want to give it. Okay. We put it to good use. You know, we'll do all. We'll do all kinds of stuff for the kingdom.
Yeah. Uh, we don't. We wouldn't give them our tithe. Okay, um, we would take special offering for that. Okay, because the tithe offering comes into the storehouse, but the special offerings to go to, get like a missionary or whatever, um, churches, you know, supporting them. We now we we gave him a nice offering when he was here. I mean, with the people he had in the building that day, it was a nice offering for a one service. Service, Hallelujah. I mean, you just look at it you know, ratio-wise, that was like, that was really good. You know, you kind of go, but see, you guys are great. You know, you love missions, you love the kingdom. But the tithe goes to the local church. Guest speaker, we take a special offering, okay? And we, and we bless, yeah. You're supporting them. Right. Yeah. That, that, would, that would be right. The church of Philippi sending once again to Paul, you know, supporting them and so forth. Um, yeah. You know, if our church had taken up support and you were giving to that, um, then that money would not be tied. It would be extra. It would be special offering. Okay. Special offering. And um, because that's, that's, you know, that's, that was how it goes. You know, and they got churches all over there supporting them and, you know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so, yeah. You've, you've had people come out and say the tithe belongs to the traveling ministry like it does to the local church. No, it does not. It goes in the local church. Special offerings can go to the traveling minister or the missionaries or whatever, or churches as a whole supporting that, which should be happening. Um, but you know, when you got get, when you got traveling ministry that's starting to, to take out of the local church, and it can't do what it needs to do, being a local church because so much money is going out somewhere else. Um, I'm going to get myself in trouble here. It's too easy to get caught up with the exciting. I want to give to that because that's exciting, and forget about the quote, mundane work of a local church because it's not always exciting. It's, it's be, they're, they're there all the time. You know, they're not exciting like the traveling guy, had, you know. No, because it's a local church, okay? And we want to support those works. And we want to support those people. And we encourage people to support those people. But the tithe goes to the local church, okay? And we want to support missions projects. We do, okay? I mean... You know, uh, Jesse Capra going, they got money in the bank right now. Um, and they're going to use a bunch of it this summer, but they're going without any financial constraints at all. Everything's paid for. Now it's going to be food and travel and all that kind of stuff in the country uh, that they're going to need for six weeks. But they're, they're, they're traveling and getting there, and their, um, their, their um, housing is covered. Okay? And money to live on while they're there because they're not going to be getting any income while they're there. Okay, well, that's a missions project. Okay, and, the, you know, we've given into that. We supported that. Praise the Lord. So we have the, you know, Shekinah Glory is coming. We get, we're going to give offerings for them, big offering for them. Believe for a big offering. Okay, and we have, we have traditionally given well. Our, our church has always been givers, and we want to continue being that. But you got to have the church running and functioning to be able to have a church that's givers, you know? And so, and the place to go, and the place to get fed, the place to be stable, and the place, you know, to be married, to be uh, be baptized, to be there when you need them. That's the, the role. The local church has all those roles. So it takes the time to run that local church. Okay. Amen. And we can get into a whole philosophical understanding of what 
different teachers and stuff, stuff are supposed to be doing is everybody on the planet is supposed to be traveling and having, you know, going into every church around the country with, you know, I mean, how many need to be doing that and versus how many are supposed to be working in a local church as a teacher or a, a, a church evangelist? You know, we could go to our whole, we could spend a whole lot of time there, you know, okay? Huh? Which would be helps ministry, you know, you're the, you're, you're the staff evangelist. You're going out winning them, bringing them in. <laughs> Brother Bill. We love helps ministry. My, my church that we were in before we came here, I was, one, one of my jobs at one time was I was the minister of helps. Hallelujah. So I ran the helps ministries. Glory to God. All right. Everybody ready to give? Anybody need to give the hat given? All right, following Jesus' name, we bless the people. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your give. We thank you. Heaven's windows are open up, and he pours out blessings. You don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, go ahead, Brother Joe, receive the in-house offering. Hallelujah. Those online, send your electronic offerings. I like to tease people and say, you spell thousand, T-H-O-U-S-A-N-D. And we don't go down from there. We go to million. You spell million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N. So if you're out there in the, in the world and want to give you know a million dollars to Expedition Church, we will receive it. Yes, sir. Pay out the building tomorrow. Amen. <clears throat> start working on the new building. Pay out this building and start working on building the big, bigger one with the bigger sanctuary. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, we'd have it up before the end of the year. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yep. And be supporting missionaries and all kinds of stuff extra. All right. So listen, we love y'all. How many enjoyed tonight? Enjoyed the fellowship first? Is that good? Okay. Who didn't want to come in? Who wants to stay out there in fellowship? Be honest. <laughs> That's why we have those benches. Yeah, well, you, you know, you could lay down on the bulge. Can't promise you there's not anything in it that won't get on you. All right. All right. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. We love you. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad.